Now to discuss this historic journey to the White House, I'm now being joined on the News at 10 by a lecturer of History and International Relations at the Lagos State University, Dr. Dapo Thomas. Thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10. You're welcome. And what a night it is, I can tell you. What a journey. Yeah, very interesting. Let's start from the rhetoric on the campaign. Many people have described it as bitter and as brutal. Is this really democracy at its finest since we're supposed to be looking at the advanced country? Well... I, I, I don't think the nuances and the uh, insults and abuses coming from such political campaigns uh, would diminish whatever value we attach to democracy. Because what, uh, what we call democracy is, I mean, also guarantees you the right to say whatever you like, but with some decency. You understand? However, it's just that we have a kind of uh, high you know, expectation. Uh, expectation that these two candidates will conduct themselves, you know, in, in a manner that will portray the American society as a very civilized society where you will not be going so low as if it's an African society where people go so low, you know, impugning the character of, you know, each other. So it's, 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 I, I think we have high expectations, and as a result of that, we believe that they should not be insulting one another. But these, these people are human. They are telling us that they are humans at the end of the day. That's what the message that is out, that as human beings, we can do whatever we like, irrespective of the kind of values that we uh, proclaim. Or but do you we think the expectations are from our own side alone? Because looking at some of the things the Democrats have been saying, they're talking about the kind of rhetoric reducing the traditions and the values that the U.S. has, you know, has been built upon, talking about maybe voter fraud and rigging even at this time. But do you see them actually uniting under a single candidate? I mean, uniting the two sides at the end of this? Yeah, well, this, this is the first time that we will come into the open that a particular candidate, a presidential candidate for that matter, will be talking about a rigged system. It's not, it's not something that um, you hear very often in the U.S. And uh, I think recently they brought out the statistics to show the kind of um, zero level at which rigging can be perpetrated in the American election. So, uh, but with what is happening now, there is no way they will close ranks at the end of the day because business will have to continue. He will have to continue with his business if he loses. And Clinton will have to continue the, because she has said that she is going to unite the Democrats, the Republicans, and all Hispanics, maybe Latinos, and the black Americans. Right. I mean, uh, the, 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 the uh, Africans, I mean, black Americans and everybody. So it's going to, they are going to close ranks at the end of the day. Okay, let's uh, look at some of the battleground states um, where we're hoping to see um, how it's going to play out tomorrow. What do you think will be at play in states like Ohio, Florida, Colorado? Do you think it will be experience, gender, race, or rhetoric? What do you think will take the day? Well, so far, I haven't seen anything that will disrupt or maybe dis uh, uh, countenance, anything that will discountenance the variables that normally play out in such states. The only consistent state where Trump has maintained the lead is Ohio. You know, he's been leading for five, for about three, four weeks now with five points in Ohio. But the other states, Clinton has been leading three, four, five, and you know. Is that your hope? <laughs> well, it's a projection. It's, it's my own expectation because I believe that um, most Americans feel that she's the only candidate, I mean, she's a, a better candidate uh, that can typify the American presidency in a way that will bring honor and glory to the American society, American state. Do you think it will make a difference for Africa, for Nigeria, whoever emerges? You know, we know the U.S. in terms of their foreign policy to be, um, what do they normally talk about? They say mutual interests, no mutual friends, you know. So do you think it will matter whether Trump emerges or Clinton emerges when it really comes down to the nuts and bolts of foreign policy? Well, there are two dimensions to um, international relations or maybe to state relations. Uh, for instance, there is what you call institutionalized paradigm, I mean institutionalized system, which is no matter who becomes the president of the nation, of the country, 
there, is, there are institutional mechanisms that will address what kind of relations that you must have with a particular continent or a particular country. But however, it does not mean that the president cannot, uh, in a way, promote or actually influence uh, an overwhelming personal, I mean, have an overwhelming personal influence on the policy or foreign policy initiatives which he intends to undertake with certain countries or maybe with a particular continent. So in this kind of situation, uh, these two variables will come to play. The institutional mechanisms will address the fundamentals of what America has with Africa or has with Nigeria. But it does not mean that a person like Trump cannot allow his own sentiment or his own hatred for the blacks or maybe for Africa to be at play All in right. a situation like this. Lecturer of History and International Relations, Dr. Dapo Thomas, thanks for sharing your thoughts on a historic night like this with us on the News at 10. You're welcome.